Did you know that the conductors inside a 15 amp and a 20 amp receptacle are exactly the same thickness? Stick around and watch me tear them apart and measure. I can be pretty suspicious and untrusting of what corporations do sometimes, and these 20 amp rated for your kitchen outlets cost a lot more than these 15 amp rated for everywhere outlets. I have a strong feeling that they're actually using the same thickness of conductors in these 20 amp outlets as they are in these 15 amp outlets. This isn't completely without foundation. All these outlets have these little break off tabs that connect the top terminals to the bottom terminals and they have that on these two. So before I started this video, I went and checked thickness of these terminals. We've got 0.77 there and 0.76 there. This is metric because I'm Canadian, but also I'm too lazy to switch it to inches. So if the copper that's connecting the terminals on the sides in these little tabs are the same thickness, what does that mean for what's inside? Let's rip these open and find out. So there's the 20 amp. That's surprising, the 15 amp is actually harder to get into. That one does not want to give up. Add out the way a little bit. It's these little bolty things that are giving me grief. There we go. That guy, that's the problem. This one didn't have that. Whew. So we should be able to pull this entire conductor off of this side on both of them. So these are 100% just a solid stamped and bent piece of copper. And I'm fairly confident that when I measure here, right beside where the terminals on your plug actually slip into to make contact, on both are going to end up being exactly the same thickness. So let's find out. 0.77 there. Who's surprised? 0.78. So the actual conductors inside of the 15 amp and the 20 amp outlet, they're exactly the same thickness. The only other bit we can test here is the ground. And this is actually a thinner piece of metal. We get 0.42 on the 15, 0.37. I mean, that's, that's within its tough to measure tolerance. There are a few other things to consider and we're switching cameras because GoPro sets a close up and we need to look at some things in pretty close detail here. The first thing I thought to consider is how much of the actual surface area of the contacts are in contact when you plug anything in. So if we look at the 20 amp on the left versus the 15 amp on the right, it looks like the contact is a little tiny bit longer. You might have maybe a millimeter more length there. However, the amount of actual surface area contact, because this is on an angle, is exceedingly small. And that, that really applies to both of them. We're only, we're only touching on tiny points here. Of course, the plug actually ends up going like this, but that doesn't really change how much contact it has. It's just you can see a little bit of light through in the sides there. Other things we can look at that aren't the actual contacts themselves, because those are basically the same, are these, I want to call them face plates. It'll be confusing because when you think of outlets and you think of face plates, you think of the bit that goes around this, but we're just going to call these face plates for today. The 20 amp face plate is definitely a lot thicker than the 15 amp face plate. Like that's, that's noticeable. The depth of the back of the receptacle seems to be very, very, very similar. So we can get a measure on that. 15.7-ish, 14.2-ish. So we're off by about one millimeter difference on the backs of these. How much difference that makes, I don't know. I've never seen any appliances that actually have a T-slot here. Maybe I'm just too poor. So will I be cheaping out and switching to using only the 15 amp receptacles because electrically it's the same conductivity? No, code requires here 20 amp receptacles, no more than two on a circuit in your kitchen, certain distance apart. Code says it. That's what I do. I just find it interesting to actually get into things and see if there's any real world difference other than this will accept a T-slot plug and this will not. This all came about because I have to build an extension cord for the brand new welder that I just bought and it has to be rated for 20 amps. So I picked up a brand new 20 amp extension cord and 
and I wanted to compare it to the older 15 amp extension cord end that I had on some other stuff from before. It turns out that the blades on the 20 amp are exactly the same thickness as the blades on the 15 amp and if you know how these things are put together these blades just pass right through and you screw your conductor up flush against the back of the blade. So I thought if these 15 amp rated plug ends are exactly the same thickness as the 20 amp rated plug ends then maybe that's happening with the outlets too. This means for me as long as I'm working on something that is just for me and not for anyone else and I don't have to signal to anyone else saying here is a 20 amp outlet or a 20 amp extension cord or something else that says hey hey 20 amp right here 20 amp only 15 but I'm 20 only 15 but I'm 20. If I don't have to do that then I'm okay saying you know what let's save us another dollar or three and just get some of these.